Good afternoon, uh, ladies uh, of our church, and for those who are on live stream, uh, we want to uh, welcome you to our uh, second month uh, ladies fellowship. And uh, it's a blessing, even though it's a lot of showers of blessing, but we thank God that he made us to be here uh, this afternoon. So we welcome you, those who are on live stream and even who are watching with us. So we're going to sing two songs, which is Because He Lives and Think About His Love. Can we stand up?
I ask, uh, I would ask Sister Jay to uh, give us an opening prayer, please. Good afternoon. Let's close. Uh, let's open in prayer. I'm already touched with this last song, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you also are touched by the songs we've just sung. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow, and we have the the hope, especially for our church. Uh, family who are hurting right now. <laughs> I know they're going through a lot, so let's just think of uh, think of um, God's love and his protection over them, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are our, our almighty God, and you love us so much, Lord, that you sent your son to die on the cross, Lord, for our sins. Uh, we owe so much, Lord. We owe our whole lives, Lord, to dedicate our lives to worshiping him to be like him, and thank you, Lord, that he's an example to us, Lord. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We just uplift our church family, Lord, who are hurting right now, who are in fear, who are hurting physically, Lord, and not knowing what the future holds, but thank you, Lord, that you hold our future, and we're so blessed with these songs, Lord, that we can honor you uh, through them. I thank you for the ladies, Lord, who are here and present, who want to, who have the desire, Lord, even through our live stream. Thank you, Lord, for having them join us today. I know this past couple years have really been uh, just a challenge, Lord, for a lot of our folks, Lord, also who have lost jobs, who have suffered through the pandemic, uh, maybe even financially, definitely, um, physically, Lord. And I just thank you for um, the, the good things that have come out of it as well, but we're so grateful, Lord, that you have um, made today a possibility for our ladies to join and for those who have um, help, helped make this production, Lord, happen, Pastor Abel, Lord, with um, live streaming as well. And um, I thank you, Lord, for the life of Ate Astrid. We just thank you that she has... Uh, dedicated her life, Lord, to serving you despite her uh, tiredness and weariness, Lord, from working and raising a family. Lord, today she's here to teach us about how to be a good Christian wife. And even if uh, we have ladies who are not wives, Lord, we know that they've also dedicated their lives in serving you um, with, their, with all their heart, Lord, and all their might and all their soul. And I just thank you for them as well. And we just pray that the rest of the, the the lesson today and the rest of the day will be a blessing, Lord, and a glorifying to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, you can sit now. I'm sorry. Welcome. Welcome, ladies. Good to see you all. So before we're going to have our game that has to be uh, presented by Sister Hazel, we're going to sing one more song. Thank you. 
God's time, he will make all things beautiful. So before we'll go to our message, I'm going to call Sister Hazel to give us a icebreaker game. Thank you. Good afternoon po. Beautiful songs and beautiful prayer by Atin Jay. Why are we so emotional? <laughs> okay, so I believe our hearts are ready to um, listen to the word of God once again. But before that, let's make our physical body awake first. <laughs> let's have um, a Bible drill. We are all familiar with this um, game. Um, we are going to show a Bible verse and then uh, we will ask you to find a specific word. Like for example, like um, the first word from the beginning or the um, like seventh word from the last. So you have to count backwards. Uh, but there's only um, like one row with this game. Since we have like about 10 seconds delayed for our folks who are um, tuning with us so what we have to do is for those who are in the church we have to wait for like 10 seconds before we open our Bibles but for the for those people who are um, tuning with us you can like once you see the the verse on your screen you can write go uh, go ahead and open your Bible and find the word and comment in our section um, comment section below but for those who are here, you have to hold up your Bible first and wait for me to say go before you open your Bible. Then you have to put your answers in our comment section too. Just, yeah, just for, so that, um, yes, but you have to um, go to our live streaming and you have to um, comment. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be fair for our um, ladies who are tuning in with us. Po. Okay, so while we are waiting, I know you're like, um, you are looking for your Bibles right now and for your phones. So let's um, see. Sister um, Sailene said good morning and she's watching with us. And then Sister Rachel Oliveros, good afternoon ladies. Have a blessed day. For sister, um, from Sister Nelia, she is uh, watching too. And then she said, I think about his love of which I am not deserving. So Sister Cora and my sister Ati Gail are watching too. Sister Nelia said, good choices of songs, ladies. Love them all. We don't know sometimes how much it blesses us. So that's a blessing. Sister Astrid, I plan to be there in person, but I could not. May God bless us all. I have electronic Bible, so I am not joining the Bible drill. You can join, Sister Nelia. You have your Bible with you, I believe. And Pastor Max is watching with us, too. <laughs> oh, that's you, Po. Okay, Po. <laughs> okay, are we ready, Po? Okay, so first um, verse. First John... Bible's up, sorry. First John 1, 3. 17th word from the beginning. Hold up your Bible, go. First John 1, 3. 17th word from the beginning. First John 1, 3. 17th word from the beginning. Yes, Pa. And please put um, number one. Okay, Sister Alice got it. She said fellowship. Ati J got it. She said fellowship. Um, Robin, fellowship. Okay, so I think we have winner. Yes. Um, Sister Alice got it first, Pa. The answer is fellowship that which we have seen and heard declare we and you that's our memory verse po <laughs> that he also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ okay second um second verse habakkuk 
3.18. Bible's up, sorry. Habakkuk 3.18. Last word, go. <laughs> Last word. Madali-dali lang po yan. <laughs> Habakkuk 3.18. Last word. <laughs> uh, Sister Lisa Baklili said salvation. That's right po, salvation. And Robin said salvation. Sister Sally said salvation. So I think we... Yeah, right. Um, just a reminder for please write number one or number two so we know um, what number are you answering po. So we have a winner, Sister Lisa. She says salvation. Mabilis, mabilis. <laughs> Number three. Bibles up. Number three. Song of Solomon 8, 7. Fifth word from the beginning. Go. Song of Solomon 8, 7. Fit forward from the beginning. Sister Lisa, love. Sister Alice, love. Uh, Robin, love. Ate J, love. Sister Sally, love. Sister Kathy, love. Sister Celine, love. Sister Angie, love. Tama po kayong lahat. The answer is love. Okay, one, two, three. Um, number four. Bibles up. Pag po, when I say go, that's when you open your Bibles, please. <laughs> Colossians 1.11, 23rd word from the last, go. Mm -hmm. 23rd word from the last. Colossians 1, 11. Number 4. From the last. Colossians 1, 11. Oh, I think Colossians 2.11. I'm sorry. Colossians 2.11. Oh, no, no. Colossians 2.12. Sorry, my bad. Colossians. Colossians 2.12 po. Colossians 1.12 then. <laughs> It's 2.12 po, I believe. Okay, 2.12 from the last. Baptism. Yes, um, Sister Sally Bautista got it. Baptism. Yeah, 212, because that's the um, verse of Sister um, Emia from last Sunday po. From, yeah, it should be from the last. It's 212, yeah. Yeah, Sister Emia's um, verse 211 and 12 from last um, Sunday, Sunday school. Okay, Bible's up. Sorry for that po. One, two, three, four. Okay, number five. Bibles up. Philippians 4, 8, 22nd word from the last. Go. Philippians 4, 8, 22nd word from the last. Twenty-two from the last book. Sister Sally Bautista got it. She said, 
lovely. Ate J, lovely. And uh, Robin, lovely. Sister Lisa, lovely. Wow, lahat tayo nakapunatan. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Let's move on to number six. Bibles up. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, fifth word from the last, go. 31, three, fifth word from the last. Jeremiah 31, three, fifth word from the last. Sister Nelia said, good. Guru sabi niya, good job, ladies. <laughs> okay, Robin got it. For the first time from our viewers, um, loving kindness. Yes po. Loving kindness. Um, Sister Lisa, loving kindness. Ate Jay, loving kindness. Okay, good job, ladies. Let's move on to our number seven. Bibles up, Revelation 10, 7, 19th word from the beginning, go. 19th word from the beginning. <laughs> 19th word from the beginning. Okay. Robin got it first. She said mystery. And then Sister Debbie, mystery. Ati J, mystery. Sister Lisa, mystery. Okay, number eight. Let's move on to our next one. J Bible's up. Job 1925, sixth word from the beginning. Go. Sixth word. One, two, three, four, five, six. That will be so quick lang po. Okay, Ati J got it first. She said Redeemer. And then Robin, Redeemer. Sister Debbie, Redeemer. Okay, number nine. Let's move on to our next. Bibles up, please. Number nine. Micah, six, eight. Eight word from the last. Go. Eight word from the last Micah from our old Old Testament six eight eight word from the last okay sister Sally napakabilis she said mercy so that's the right answer po mercy <laughs> okay are you ready for the last one I think Sister Nadia is delayed. She's still at number eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, Robin said mercy too. Okay, number ten. Bibles up. Isaiah 25, 9. 20th word from the last. Go. 20th word from the last. Isaiah 25, 9, 20th word from the last. Okay, Robin got it first. Yeah, she said save. Sister Ali said save. Adi J save. Sister M, you waited. Sister um, Lisa save. Sister Debbie save. Okay, good job, ladies. So I think we're wide awake, right? And our hearts are ready. And um, so, um, before we listen to uh, our teacher this afternoon, na napakaganda nating sinadora, um, let's um, listen to her um, daughter first um, to prepare our hearts for um, the Word of God. Let's listen to um, Kiana's special music. Thank you. There's a light within me, the perfect light of Christ And I have made a promise to keep it burning bright 
by walking in his footsteps and following his plan in every time in every place in every way i can i will shine like the candle in the dark all it takes to make a difference is a spark and it's easy to see that the bright spoken turned sadness to hope one choice to be like jesus was spread the love he gives and one by one the world becomes a better place to live we shine like the candle in the dark all it takes to make a difference in Good afternoon, ladies. I said, am I going to be cold or just going to walk here? <laughs> um, Kiana's song was, she doesn't smile, she doesn't smile, because that was the second time someone uh, deleted the first song, <laughs> and then she needs to come back to uh, redo it, so she's not um, happy there anymore. Good afternoon, ladies. Uh, good afternoon to all our viewers. Uh, thank you for um, being with us. And the ladies here who uh, patiently uh, came here to the church. I don't know uh, how you people can get used to this here. Because I always tell Pastor Abel in the afternoon, Pastor Abel, when you put my chair, I will be at the back. I don't even want to sit down there in the, in the middle or by the front. Now I don't have a choice. <laughs> I need to be in the pulpit. And I even ask, can I just pick there? But no, hindi, hindi umubra yung uh, apila ko. Hindi, hindi pwede. Okay, good afternoon, ladies. Um, I don't know. Uh, I cannot get used to this. Um, but thank you to Pastor Abel. Thank you to Sister Alice, uh, Sister Hazel. Um, when I first did the, the um, was that Sunday school in the house? It's like one week to, just to prepare my, my chair, my, uh, my table, my spot, my cats. I have six cats. Please don't go to my table. And then my, my silent, please, children, give me silencio for, for one hour and a half. So it's not easy. Now it's easy just walk here and prepare your lesson. Thank you, Pastor Abel. Okay, this afternoon, um, you saw our title, Focus as a Christian Wife. It's still February, still family month, it's still love. Um, so wala pa rin kayong escape. So we still have, for last day today, to, to uh, study about uh, family, marriage, love, and everything else about February. Uh, 
I want to give credit to the pastors for this lesson. Uh, when I first heard this and read this, I was so blessed and I was so amazed. And I said to myself, it's not only me needs to be heard this in the church. You all need this to hear this lesson. I was so blessed and I was so thankful. So to God uh, be the glory for this lesson. Um, let's pray first. Let's, let's go in prayer. Let's go in prayer. Um, Father, I pray for every home, every family, every husband, every wife. I pray, bless their home, their marriage, that will be strengthened. Then if there's a struggle in the marriage, may they reinforce today. Some make them better, resurrect, revive, Lord, restore. Speak to us as we consider it now, what's the role of a woman in a marriage? In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Um, I don't know if uh, some of you, I think, heard my testimony. Uh, some of it, you heard it last Sunday with Pastor Abel. Uh, my testimony when my purse uh, teach the, the uh, Saturday Bible study, uh, ladies in, in the house. That's my, my first time. I cannot remember, probably that was three years ago. That was my first time. And I shared how I met Brother Chris. So I'll share it again. Maybe some of you didn't hear it this yet. I met uh, Brother Chris in the church. First time seeing him. It was one of the events in the church. So I saw him sitting in front of me. So I said, hmm, cute guy. <laughs> so I said, I closed my eyes. I said, Lord, he's cute. Uh, I like him. But I know, Lord, hindi ako kamukha ni Vilma Santos because he looks like Ed Manzano. So Lord, I know you're not gonna give it to him, but I'm still gonna pray for him na siya ang maging uh, partner ko. So after that, so I prayed, I prayed for that. After that, to make the story short, uh, shorter, our, <laughs> our word naging maliit. So he's friend with my brothers. So my brothers keep asking me sometimes na, Ali kayo, nandito sila, ano? Sila Chris and uh, mga kapatid niya. And then uh, that, that, that day also, uh, Nanay Greg uh, sitting next to Brother Chris, sabi niya, Kumusta ka, sis, uh, Astrid? Me, as yung aking matigas na boses na kung ano, okay lang po. Pero at that time, eh, okay lang po. <laughs> so anyway, so <laughs> after that, um, sister, yeah. So me and Brother Chris, and you know, Brother Chris is so quiet. And I'm the palaging yung ano. So after that, he said, one of those uh, gatherings sa, sa bahay na one of the friends, he said, gusto mo magkape. <laughs> Yun ang kanyang ano. And I'm the coffee worshiper. Ano sasabihin ko, di ba? So ang naging, uh, kaya ang naging ano namin, naging love song ni Brother Chris, alam niyo yung kanta ni Barbara Streisand and uh, Brian Adams na uh, my word dun na nakalagay is um, uh, uh, let's started uh, over a copy and uh, we started out as a friend. So that's uh, sa nervous ko ngayon, hindi ko na matandaan. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's go to our lesson. So how many of us here has home sweet home? Not all the time. Di ba? Not all the time. Even, a Christian, even as a Christian home. And how many of us need help to have one? Di ba? I need one. Like, sabi ko nga, hindi, hindi madali. Especially now, I have 16, 17, and my 10 na uh, kaya na na pag minsan eh, lumalampas pa ang kulit sa ate niya at kay kuya niya. So like I said, our title of our message is What We Need to Focus as a, uh, as a Christian Wife. 
So first question, are we a godly wife? If, uh, yeah, sometimes. Uh, if Brother Chris, you, you will ask him that question. Is uh, Sister Astrid is a godly wife? <laughs> and you know him, he'll just, mm. Hindi yan sasagot. Sabi ko nga eh, salamat. Thank, I thank God for him na he could uh, put up with me. I'm not perfect. I'm trying. <laughs> so before the, before the message, I have a story. I think you heard this before. Or one of the Sunday school when I taught here. Uh, there's a guy walking in the beach. And he saw a genie bottle. And then, grabbed the, the bottle, the genie came out. So sabi niya doon sa genie, mm, now. So palaging three wishes, di ba? So sabi nung genie, the genie said, oh, the, the guy said, oh, now you'll ask me my three wishes? Oh, the genie said, just one, one now. Uh, life now is expensive. It's, it's not easy now. So I'm going to ask you just one, one wish. Okay, the, the guy said, um, I, al I always... Um, dream of going to Hawaii, but I'm afraid of flying. So can you make, uh, if you can make a you know, bridge, just to avoid flying, would be easy, you know, go to the bridge. And the genie said, oh, that's expensive. Don't you know how complicated is that? And how expensive is that to make a bridge? So I mean, no, no, not, 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 not the, uh, the bridge going to Hawaii, connecting to California. That's very expensive. So the guy said, okay, let me just change my wish. Um, you know, sometimes, most of the time, I don't understand my wife. Can you give me a wisdom to uh, understand my wife? And the genie said, go back to the bridge. How many? How many connection do you want? You know, it's just, ladies, it's sometimes, Mahirap tayong intindihin, di ba? It's complicated to understand a woman. And uh, it's always a mystery. Palang, we are always mystery to our husband. And uh, even to one another, di ba? Just us. Even with our friends, with same ladies. Hindi pa rin din tayo nagkakaintindihan sometimes, di ba? We are mystery to one another as ladies too. Who, do, who don't understand sometimes, tayo rin, hindi tayo nakakaintindihan. But there is always who understand as well. And who is? Yes. Our Lord Jesus Christ. God himself, who created us, who knows about us and how wonderful us, how we made, he made us. Um, if, if there's a new product, di ba? they will as a new product, paano ni, uh, they have a strategy of selling it. In selling, strat uh, the, the, the strategy of selling a product, they will use a word, a new and improve. Diba? New and improve palagi yan. Just to sell this new product, they will advertise it very well. Maybe the logo, it's gonna, uh, the, it has a nice logo. It, uh, they will change the color. It has a nice color or they will put an extra ingredient. So that has a the real effect. Yun ang magiging real effect nila just to sell this new product. But just to say it's new and improved, para lang masabi, it is new and improved. So because we always want the newest, the pressness, the fastest, or the, la the latest version of it. Kahit na sa mga sasakyan, di ba? We always want the new version just like buying a new car, diba? Just like I said, just like buying a new car. First, there's the new car smell. Ang ganda ng amoy, diba? Yung amoy, talagang may in love ka. And it's amazing because everything is clean. And you'll make a bow on this new car. Especially siguro kung yun yung mga Escalade, Mercedes-Benz, diba? And I'm gonna take care of this uh, car. Because you're making a bow on this new car. I'm going to take care of this car. There will be no dent on this car. No dent. And then I will wash this every day. No, I, every week, every week. 
Every week na lang, masyadong mahal lang every day. And then, it will take on a regular maintenance. Palagi kong i-maintenance ito. Ako nung una, isusulat ko pa nung na maintenance, marks, and then, kailangan ko pang isulat yung next maintenance para matandaan ko. And then, I will make it running. In, ma, ma, baka umabot na ng mga 25 years. Dahil lagi kong, dahil sa inaalagaan ko. It will be still on the road, running. So, I will make it a classic car. So, yun yung magiging bangudo sa car. So, then there's uh, first family vacation. Di ba? Lalo na kapag may mga anak kayo. I had three kids. Pag nagutom, every one hour, gutom. Nandiyan kami sa wawa palagi. O, lahat na nang dumi, nandiyan na. So now, forget about it. Now, the first dent, second dent, then after dent, and then and then. And then, you don't bring it to regular maintenance anymore. Forget about bringing it to maintenance. Now, you're having some problem on it. And it's not the way it used to be. Then you saw the, la the latest model of the car. Wow! Gusto ko naman ng bagong car ngayon, the new model. Dahil yung binaw, when I made the bow on the other car, nawala na. You forget about it already. No more. So in comparing it our, in our marriage, marriage can be like this. On the day of your marriage, you stated your vows. Ang mga vows natin, kinasal ka man sa simbahan or sa munisipyo, it's the same. You bow to your husband, I'll take you for better or for worse, for richer and for poor. In sickness and in health, di ba? Pamilyar na pamilyar tayo. To love and to cherish till death do us part. Yes. <laughs> B-E-B-T-E-R. Oh, okay. Death till death do us part. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> B-E-B-T-E-R. I forget to tell, to say, to those who are listening and here now, they're not married yet. They're not, you know, on the, on the, ano na, married. You know, you can use this lesson in the future. <laughs> you can use this. I forgot to mention. Not all the listeners are uh, as a wife or as a marriage. Okay. And you mean every word, every word of that bow, didn't we? Diba? I want to keep that promise. I'm going to be the most loving wife. Whoa, tumpak. I'm going to be the most loving wife. We will going to have the best marriage. Yes, I like that. Time pass. Time pass. You neglected the maintenance <laughs> of your marriage. You neglected it. May mga spatter na. Then, this time, do you want to get a new car or new husband? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. You're not going to dump your husband. It's just, it, that's not the point, okay? That's not the point. It's too expensive. <laughs> it's too expensive. Yes. <laughs> no, don't do that. That's not the point of this lesson. So this is about helping your husband, new and improved, and you. You will improve you, me. Um, and there's a very key role that we could play on all of this, on how to make our husband new and improve. If, if what? If we do it on God's way, we have to remember that. It's not easy. Do you think that's easy? Na hindi ako sasagot kay Brother Chris? It's not easy. But if you go to Bible, it's easy. If we do it on a God's way, I have to say that again. If we do it on God's way. But before you can turn your husband, remember this, ladies. Before you can turn your husband into a new man, maybe we need to think about becoming a new human, new woman first. Diba? Tayo muna. Bago mo sasabihin yung husband muna, you need to be changed. I think isipin mo muna you. You need to new, make a new woman first. In. 
di ba? Bible principle. It's easy. Sasabihin ko ulit, it's easy. Na lagi mong ibabalik. You have to put back yung mga what you heard sa mga preaching, sa mga Bible study, all the lessons. It's easy. So some woman wants to have a good husband, but never manage to be a good wives. Diba? Ulitin ko. Some woman wants to have a good husband, but never manage to be a good wives. About the role of a woman, specifically the role of a wife in a marriage. So what are we learning here? As a Christian wife, we'll go to our point number one. So point number one, it says there, be the best version of you that you can be. Be the best version of you that you can be. Uh, let's start reading First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Like I likewise, ye wives. Be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with peer. Verse 3, was adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, Verse 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Now, first and foremost, a woman you need to be godly. You want to be a virtuous woman. Remember Proverbs 31? So virtue. It's virtu. Virtu is like it speaks of purity, in short. It speaks of purity. It's talking about a, a balanced woman. It's strong in every way. She is a woman that beautiful outside and also inside. And it is so little to say in a culture today, in so much focus to all women magazines, diba? out there, all appearance, palaging appearance, how to how to uh, lose X amount of pounds, how to uh, uh, have good body, have good diet. That's not ugly. It's, it's a good too. It's a good thing too. By summer, you have to have a good body. And all in all, outward. All, it's all the outward on that woman magazine that you can read. All outward. And you, will, you won't see, do you think you will see a billboard or a headline na nakalagay dun malaki? How to be a godly woman. Never, di ba? Never, never, never. Na makikita kayo ng billboard that you will see a big board. It says how to be a godly woman. And you will never see it because it's not the focus of a culture today. It's not a focus of the culture today. But it's all on the way or how, how you look. When that age kicks in, you'll be frustrated. The look the way you back 10 to 20 years ago. So there's a worry, there's a concern. The, the, the pull of gravity is kicking in. The striking beauty now, you feel it's not there anymore. But here's the thing. If you're concentrating a beautiful, beautiful woman inside as well as outside, you will be more attractive the passing of years, not less. So there's something special about godly woman. And that's why non-believers are attract attracted to Christian women because they don't find those values sa mga non-believers. They rather go to the believers woman, di ba? So, they find those values out there. 
uh, on Christian women more. So they come to the Christian woman. Are we agree with that? Diba? So they see that virtue. They see that quality. And they want that. So godly woman focuses primarily on the internal. But does not forget the external too. Let me say that again. Primarily, primarily on the godly woman focuses primarily on the internal, which is spiritually, but does not forget external too. In First Peter chapter 3, verse 3, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting of apparel. Siguro ako magiging number one against this because I wear makeup, I cannot forget my lipstick. So, I don't forget my external too. Hindi ko pwedeng sabihin na wag kayo mag external Kasi I cannot say that. You see me all the time putting my lipstick there in the bathroom. I won't forget it. I always, and when I go to Walmart or some other beauty products, I always go straight to the lipstick. Ano kaya yung magandang kulay na una? Right away. So, godly woman focus in the internal. The spiritual but let's not forget about the external or the physical. But don't focus primarily on cosmetics. But it doesn't say don't use them. Makeup, especially lipstick. I, like what I just said, that's me. So this is not to put down an outward beauty as a Christian. This, but this is not a criticism of doing everything that you can to be attractive. But don't be that your primary focus. Bible do not forbid to look attractive, but encourage it. One example to the bride of Solomon. In Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 10, thy cheeks are comely with rows of jewels, thy neck with chains of gold. So it describes a woman of beauty that wears beautiful clothing. Diba? And some it says in Proverbs 31, verse 22, she maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. So, diba, biblical din naman, eh, diba? It's biblical. So, God is not condemning woman for dressing herself attractively. But the criticism is being pre preoccupied with it. Because the worst criticism is don't only think about, but we could go far, neither side. We could be all about the spiritual, then neglect the outward. Or we can all about outward and neglect the inward. So we need to find the balance that is given to us in scripture. But the best version of you that you can be as, attra as attractive as you can be not because you are married now, I could say, he needs to love me the way I am. I'm going to neglect my outward. I'm not going to make myself beauty. I'm, anyway, I'm married. He, he has no choice anymore. <laughs> That's true. And I don't need to be a runaway model. Because he doesn't look like that. Edo Mansano, <laughs> hindi naman si George Clooney or si, ano eh, si Brad Pitt. So no one say, you cannot say that. So that's why, in point number one, be the best version of you that you can be. It is important to take care of your physical body that God has given to us. Don't take us as a spiritual to be concerned, waiting too much, or being out of shape, or neglecting yourself So I'll say it again. Be the best person, version of that you can be. I, I think I said it too much already on that point number one. So we'll go to point number two. Point number two. Ito, favorito niyo to. Respect your man. Di ba? Respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Di ba may song yun? R-E-S-E-P-T. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> so in First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Verse one after two. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, 
that if any obey not the word, not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Verse 2, again, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with peer. So on point number two, we must respect our husband. Especially to me too. It's not, it's me too. For me too. I'm giving the lesson and that's for me too. Astrid, respect brother Chris. Respect your, our husband. And let's read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33. Ephesians 5 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverent reverence her husband so ladies do we respect our husband amen amen, amen. amen. wives needs love remember this wives needs love but men needs respect that's true but the scripture very specific to wife Respect your husband. And every specifically say to husband, love your wife. To all the husband who are listening there, we could respect you, but you have to love us. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> scripture, right? Biblical. We're not making this up, right? It's scripture. I think we should pay attention to that. Sometimes, Men are mischaracterized, not being an emotional, diba? but I think that's not true. Men are emotional as women, or they are just suppressive, they're holding it back, or sometimes they're just covering it. It's like it's not, it's not masculine for them if they show their emotional ano, side. You know what? You can tell your husband the word, Jesus wept. Diba? Jesus wept. So, hindi itinago ni Jesus Christ yung emotion niya. Jesus expressed his weeping, his sorrow, his joy, his emotion. Man holds their emotion. Is that true? Men out there who are listening, man holds their emotion. You know, sometimes you notice your husband. He's just standing there. And you'll be there. He's looking at you. Mm, sabi mo, ganda ng wife ko. My wife is beautiful. And uh, <clears throat> I love her so much. And they're just saying to themselves, that's why men, you have to say it. <laughs> you have to step up. I love you. And uh, you're beautiful. Diba? Pinatago nila palagi eh. So, women need love. Women need love. So, our husband needs our respect. Instead of telling him when he comes home from work, telling him that um, he needs to do that, he needs to do this, he's not measuring up, you know, that could be harmful for him. It's like, uh, you can say that, but you have to balance it with respect. Diba? You have to balance it with respect. Um, instead, you know, you know, you can do is, not even every day, even, even once, once a week. Honey, I don't know if I said this before to you. Um, or lately, but I love you, I respect you, I admire you as the head of this family. And you know what's gonna happen? <claps> Boom! Every day yan, yung, yung mga chores sa bahay, <laughs> lagi nyo na yung ginagawa. <laughs> Maybe in, 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 not every day, maglala siya ng, in a week, probably in a month. Pag yun lang, yun ang sikreto. And you will see. Try it. <laughs> so in short, nagging won't never accomplish. But little compliment 
Diba? Little compliment. Why not? Diba? Little compliment. Why not? I don't know if you heard this before. Stop reaching to your husband. Start praying for them. Diba? Stop reaching. Ewan ko ano yung mga nasa sa inyo na ikaw yung pinipreach ninyo. Whatever is that. I have my own preaching to my husband. So, I have to remember that. Just pray. Just pray. So, why? Respect your husband. Because it's true. When our husband feels disrespectful, it's hard to love his wife. Diba? It's hard to love his wife. And why feel unloved? It's hard to respect her husband. Let me say that again. Why respect your husband? Because it's true, when our husband feels disrespectful, it's hard to love his wife. And when wife feels unloved, it's hard to respect her husband. So it's just a natural reaction for one another. Right? It's just natural. So what do we need to do? So what do we need what do we need to do now? Simple. Just do your part. Do our part. Don't wait until you feel love. Do loving things right now. Do loving things. Don't don't wait now. It's not doing it. Why would I do it? Do your part. Respect your man. Do your part. So don't 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 wait until feel love. Do loving things and show your respect in Action. In action. Do your respect. In action. There's one story. I love story. <laughs> um, a one woman, pumunta siya sa, he went to the attorney. She went to the attorney, and you know, ano yung balak niya? She said, I don't want my husband anymore. I just decided now to divorce him. I want to divorce my husband. Not just divorce him. I want to hurt him more. I want to hurt, hurt him first. So the attorney said, OK. The attorney said, before you divorce your husband, do this first for the next three months. I want you to tell your husband how much you love him for three months, every day. How much you respect him, compliment him. Every day, compliment him. Just tell him all the great things you see to him for three months. And after he's so built up, dump him. Tell him that you're gonna divorce him. Oh, you will hurt him so much just doing that after you did that for three months. So after three months, the attorney was waiting. Okay, she's gonna call now. She's not calling, let me call her. Okay, uh, it's been three months now. Uh, can we file the papers now? We can, you know, start the, the, the divorcing paper. And then the woman said, are you kidding, attorney? We're going on our second honeymoon. Diva, <laughs> it works. We are going to our second honeymoon. Una may ibil la pa siya eh. Wow, I'll do that. And then attorney, I will dump him and then divorce him with, his, with her evil love. And then she found out, the, the attorney found out na they're going to a second honeymoon. So no more, it works. So what did, they, what, you know, what did she accomplish? What did she accomplish? She just honored a simple biblical principle by respecting her husband. Okay, let's go to point number three. Only three. Hanggang point number three lang tayo. Um, point number three. Submit to the leadership of your husband. That's on 1 Peter chapter 3 and 1 and 2 pa rin. Um, to the men out there, the bat's getting better. It's getting better. So submit to the leadership of your husband. Now let's be honest. 
In a culture today, nobody wants to submit to anyone. It's always me. It should be me. It's a me first culture. And we don't want the idea of submitting ourselves on any form of authority. But when we look at the scripture, we may not like it, but we need to understand something. We all call to submit to God, right? We all call to submit to God. Submit to God, to the Bible say, resist the devil and he flee from you. And also in the marriage, husband and wives are both called to submit to each other. Diba? Let me say that again. Also in the marriage, husband and wives are both called to submit to each other. Let us read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 to 23. Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Before verse, before verse 22 and 23, look at verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So first, submission to God and mutual submission to one another. So the husband said, I'm going to submit to you and support you and I'll hold you, I, I'll hold you underneath. And the wife said the same thing for him. So first, he start with submission to God for both of you. And neutral submission to one another. Now, there's a specific place, role of a man and a woman in a marriage. This is not suggesting that a man is more superior than a woman and the woman is inferior. So it is rather mean that they belong to each other. They belong to each other. Therefore, when a woman called to submit to the husband, of, well, therefore, when a woman called to submit to the leadership, to the leadership of the man is not saying she is any less than a man because she isn't. We're not less because we're not. So men and women have equal standard before God. You believe that? We have equal standard before God. Let's read, let's see what Apostle Paul writes in Galatians 3.28. He said, Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So though there is no difference between man and woman in the nature of their salvation or standing with God, there is a structure of authority that God has set in marriage. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, chapter 11 verse 3, Paul writes, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Let's understand this verse. It means, we will get the picture on this one. Notice that the head of Christ is God. Let's see the Trinity for a moment. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are so they are co-equal, co-eternal. The Father is not anymore God, man, unto Son. The Son is not more God 
or more deity than spirit is they are all God. All part of God head, they are all deity. But yet they have separate function in role. Scripture teaches us that God the Father is the head of Christ. Though Jesus was God when he walked to this earth, he submitted to the will of the Father, then he? Because he lowered himself. He lowered himself. In Philippians said, he laid aside his rights and privileges or empty himself. Or in the Greek word, kenosis, it means emptying. So he put the will of the Father, even the will of his own. Is that mean Jesus is less than the Father? No, they are equal. But it means he took a different role for himself. In John chapter 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. So the relation is structure of Christ to God the Father is the same with marriage. Same with our marriage. Though the husband and wife are equal, there is standing before God. In order for the family to function in harmony, the woman with no less of dignity takes the place of submission to the headship of the husband. Are we agree? And the husband models the way God loved the church. So the wife models the way the church loved God. So the husband has the God-given responsibility to provide, to protect, and lead. And just the Lord lead the church. And the wife is, any word to let? Submit. To submit graciously to this servant leadership the husband provides. Okay? Now listen, ladies, I think any husband would listen to his wife. Smart. Diba? <laughs> Do you think when your husband listens to you, you think he's smart? Yes, why not? Diba? <laughs> yeah, I think if my husband, if Brother Chris uh, said just to my decision sometimes, okay, you're smart because you, you listen to me. Because in 18 years, in 18 years of our marriage with Brother Chris, um, I cannot think of any decision that, you know, that he didn't consult me. He always consulted me. He always consulted me. And <clears throat> he'll say, he'll say, what do you think? And he gets, he gets my input. Let's say, he gets my input. Many times he'll go um, this way decision, but at the end he's still, oh, yes, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Um, and he will, some, he'll, do it, he'll do his way sometimes, and sometimes he doesn't like it. He'll go away and then come back to me. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's the pag may big decision it's always like ganun, ganun ang scenario uh, I'll say this then I think uh, he doesn't like it walk on then he probably think you're right <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right so sometimes he doesn't like it he'll so <clears throat> he'll just say okay you're right and he'll say Okay, the idea is better. And sometimes uh, we need to do we need to do this, and then it will turn up that he's right too. Sometimes uh, he's wrong, sometimes, and sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. So merong merong ganong scenario palagi. So it works in many ways, diba? It depends. It works in many ways. But the point is. There has to be some kind of structure. But I'll say this again. He's smart when he listens to me. 
Okay, let's, let's read Proverbs 31, verse 11 to 12. Thank you, Pastor Abel. Proverbs 31, 11 to 12. Did I give that? Uh, 31, verses 11 and 12. She make it, the, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. And verse 12, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And Proverbs 31, verse 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So I know it's easier to submit to a godly leadership. It's easy, di ba? Because you, you understand each other. So I know it's easy to submit to a godly leadership. If our, if our husband is loving us as, a, the, as Christ loved the church, it's not really hard to follow because he's putting us first as his wife. But on the other hand, if you are married to a man, not godly at all, he profess his faith, but he doesn't lead spiritually, maybe you find yourself to non-believer marriage, so what would you do now? Um, one thing God did not say, divorce your husband because he's not going with you in the church. No, I didn't say that. But what God wants to us or as a Christian wife, as a believer, don't leave him, but to try to him, but try to win him without a war. Try to win him without a war. Or are we saying, we still need to submit to the leadership of a husband that's not a Christian? And the answer is a qualified yes. A qualified yes. <clears throat> a qualified yes because you let him the leadership of your marriage or relationship. But if he'll tell you to do something outside to the will of God, it's different. Diba? Isang illustration. As a Christian wife, you tell your non-believer husband, if he'll say, don't go to church. I don't want you to go to church. Don't, don't bring the kids either. Don't go to church. What would you do? Diba? <clears throat> Are you going to submit and stay home? Stay home, because he said don't go to church. Stay home. No. But instead, honey, my husband, I love you. I made a breakfast. Breakfast is there. I'll bring the kids in the church, and I'll see you after church. <clears throat> We will see you when we get back. Because you need to think your own spiritual life. You need to think your own spiritual life. Example, you, or if your husband asks you to do something immoral, illegal, but that's a no-no, that's a big no-no. You are not required to submit. Or for example, if your husband is hitting you, no, you're not required to submit. You have to understand, sometimes a higher law superseded on a lower one. So even the husband is the head, the wife has to, sub, has to submissive role, but God established his, he is the overall. He is the overall. For example, the government we are required to submit because the Bible says the government put it into place. So let's say the government pressed the law of nobody can pray at all anymore. Stop the prayer. Should we obey that law? Should we? No, we're gonna pray. I'm gonna pray. We're gonna pray as a Christian. It's the same law that passed during 
the lifetime, very familiar, di ba? The lifetime of Daniel in Babylon. Cannot pray to God except to the king. What did Daniel did? He prayed. Not just prayed. He opened all the windows, got down to his knees. Or if the law says you cannot proclaim the gospel, are we going to stop? Are we going to stop proclaiming the gospel? Do we need to, to obey that as a Christian? No, because as the apostle said, to the authority we must obey God, not men. In Acts 5.29, diba? So, what we need to focus as a Christian wife, let your beauty be primarily, primarily in word. Respect and honor your husband. And as much as possible, submit. Ilang po, I hope you learned something in this lesson. I'm telling you, it hit my heart when I heard this, this lesson and study it. But uh, who should I call now? Uh, Ati Josie? Can I call Ati Josie? I think that's the program. Yeah. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> Senadora. <laughs> uh, I'm just so grateful for the lesson that uh, we have heard. And uh, I'm so thankful that I have a husband who always says, I love you and you're pretty. <laughs> you're pretty. I, can, I don't know. I'm not that kind of person. But I'm so grateful that he is. Talagang uh, magka opposite. Opposite siguro kami. God has uh, put us together. But uh, praise God for all these points. Uh, of course, it's uh, always uh, very hard to submit. Uh, I'm telling you, that's my struggle. Uh, I always think that I'm more intelligent than him. Uh, you know, you know, decision making and everything, and uh, that's right. He always comes to me. Oh, you're right. You're right. I always hear that from him, and uh, I know. Um, He's a good man, uh, but uh, what do you call this? He expresses it. Unlike me, uh, I don't know. Uh, God help me. That's my prayer every time that I... Uh, we're now married almost, what, 45 years? Uh, and yet, I'm still learning. I'm still learning, uh, and I want to be... Uh, more loving uh, to my husband. That's my that's my weakness. Uh, and the last point that uh, Sister Astrid taught us is about the how about if we have uh, ungodly husbands. Uh, that's very difficult, and you need more grace. Uh, but so far, all the husbands of our, uh, the unbelieving husbands of our uh, brethren here, I'm telling you, they're more, uh, quote unquote, godly <laughs> than some uh, supposedly Christian, Christian uh, uh, husbands. Uh, they're more, uh, what do you call, it? provider. They provide more for their families, and they love their children more. Uh, and our prayer is, before they die, they will truly accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That's the only thing that we can pray for them, because uh, all these years that we have seen them uh, uh, with you together, uh, they have exemplified uh, uh, a father who is uh, ideal in the sense of the unbelieving world. But uh, their souls, it has to uh, be secured too before the Lord comes. So you will see it's other up there in heaven. And that's 
our earnest prayer every day. We pray for them. Uh, you don't want to be separated uh, when the time comes. And uh, Sister Astrid, I can uh, truly thank your mom because she really prayed hard for you. Uh, we have seen you since uh, you were when Bergen was still young and uh, uh, we have seen the progress in your Christian life and we're so grateful. Your mom truly prayed so hard for you and the family and that's what it is. Ladies, up to your old age, you have to be praying for your children, grandchildren. That's our role now as grandparents. Never stop. And we know that mm, one of these days we will get the answer to our prayers. Thank you so much for this uh, lesson that we have. And thank you for all the ladies that have come. Let's pray. Our great God, loving Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and that thou hast heard uh, the prayers of your children, Lord, uh, praying for Sister Astrid as uh, uh, she prepared for this lesson. And uh, thank you for all the listeners, the ears that have heard uh, this lesson, Lord God, that we will truly have um, uh, taken it to heart, that uh, we will uh, be an example, Lord God, um, even as we show our love to our uh, husbands, uh, as our children are uh, um, watching us uh, treat our husbands, Lord God, and as you have said in your word that we have to be first righteous, godly, and uh, so we can win our unbelieving husbands and uh, the husbands that uh, we have right now who are uh, godly and serving you faithfully, uh, truly, Lord God, that uh, it's easier to submit to them uh, than to our an ungodly husband, Lord God, but uh, thou hast given us uh, the grace, Heavenly Father, to uh, love them as they are, and as you have loved us as we are, Lord God, we are not worthy of your love, but yet uh, you have showered us with so many things, Lord, beautiful things uh, in this life. Uh, even right now that we have seen the ladies, uh, as, even as we struggle during this pandemic, Lord God, but the one thing we uh, have seen from them is uh, their love for one another, uh, being able to think of ways to fellowship one with another and uh, take care of one another, Lord, as uh, the concerns are being presented. Uh, it's an everyday and we are just so grateful that you have given us this church uh, whereby we can serve you and we can give our best to you while waiting for your coming. Father God in heaven, we want to say we love you for we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Mm -hmm. So great is the measure of our Father's love. How could I forget? Satisfied. He satisfies. He satisfies. 